Thanks for joining us for our webinar today, Hybrid Cloud Media Workflows, Limiting Costs but Not Performance or Security. Joining us today are Raul Barkova, Founder and CTO of Evolfin, and Rich Wilson, Principal Architect at Cloudian. With that, I'll hand over to Raul. Thank you, Audrey. This is uh, Rahul Bhargava. So before we start, a little bit about uh, Evolfin. We are based here in Silicon Valley. We've been in business since 2007. And from get-go, our focus has been pure software. We are agnostic to the various hardware um, integrations that we support, whether it's with storage or archive but we do um, test out these integrations with key partners, and one of the key partners is Cloudian. So we have direct Cloudian hyperstore integration, which we'll cover in this uh, webinar. The use cases for Evolfin solutions tend to be pretty diverse, from a media and entertainment to healthcare, etc. and that's because of the virtue of our um, plug-in support and, and the breadth of our product. Rich? Thank you, Raul. Uh, Rich Wilson here. Nice to meet everyone. Uh, Cloudian uh, was founded in 2001 as Gemini Mobile, uh, and we were founded with a clear vision to revolutionize data storage by bringing object storage to the enterprise, uh, which is unlike expensive, complex, and proprietary uh, products uh, that came before it. Cloudian's technology allows all sizes and types of users to realize the benefits of object storage within your data center. Uh, we're based in Silicon Valley, uh, and we specialize in S3 compatible object storage, and we've of course partnered with Evolfin and integrated with the Zoom product. Uh, and our technology roots are in the large scale enterprise message space as the core Gemini Mobile product. Uh, and Cloudian introduced our object store platform in 2011. Uh, and we've received the largest funding for distributed file systems and object store providers um, a couple of years ago. So Evolfin and Cloudian have been partnering since 2016, and we have a very well-oiled integration that has been hardened across several large customers. We are managing millions of uh, assets and petabytes of data between Evolfin's uh, media asset management solution and Cloudian as the archive. And as part of the partnership, some of the benefits that come to customers are a unified support model. Oftentimes when you are integrating with other solutions, it's hard to pinpoint where the issue is, but all of those have been streamlined. And both the companies follow the latest trends in the industry and are constantly looking at uh, integrating with new features. Now, Evolfin, uh, from a market standpoint, uh, is built on three pillars. The first one is DAM, Digital Asset Management. Often DAM is thought of as the uh, asset management solution for general users. So if you have finished content videos and that you want to promote, distribute, you use a DAM, and they often have fairly simple user experiences. But the DAMs are often not well suited for large media and high-res files. That's where our MAM pillar comes along. With the MAM, we can manage any kind of media, high-res, 4K, uh, and uh, essentially automate the ingest of media, automate the transcoding, AI analysis, and archiving to stores like Cloudian. And then the final pillar is PAM. While there are a lot of MAM and DAM, PAM is often overlooked. So PAM is the part which allows us to manage work in progress workflows where editors and producers are trying to collaborate remotely or on-prem, and that often involves project files, Adobe CC files, which requires managing the revisions of these. If a producer were to give some feedback, editor needs to quickly go and put out a new uh, export. All of that is managed in our PAM. So Evolfin combines all the three pillars into one easy-to-use solution. And for Cloudian, uh, why Cloudian? Uh, we are native S3 object storage that is cost effective, resilient, and scalable. We can start small and grow from you know, 10 to 20 terabytes is a good entry point to hundreds of petabytes. Um, you know, we really wanted to address the, the challenges within you know, data center storage managers, broadcast storage managers, uh, researchers, software developers. They have to solve uh, they need solutions that help them contend with data growth, uh, with unstructured data across all industries, really, uh, from media to medical, industrial. 
um, new applications and formats are, are just constantly increasing the requirements for the data underneath. Uh, so we are software defined and we can we run on commodity x86 servers. Um, we are full featured um, allowing private S3 endpoint behind your firewall within your data center securely. Uh, we also allow for multi data center topologies uh, supporting multiple regions. Uh, and different data protection schemas to be all active within the same cluster at the same time. Uh, and in addition to S3, we have uh, a NAS product, Hyperfile, for uh, addressing legacy applications that maybe don't support the S3 API. Uh, so we can present the contents of, uh, of an S3 bucket on HyperStore uh, for SIFs or, S or NFS access. Uh, to, hand, to address the legacy uh, environments. And so we can start, we're a distributed system, so we can start with a minimum of three nodes, um, start small and, and scale. Uh, we can scale to, again, hundreds of petabytes. Um, the native S3 API is really key. We don't have a proprietary API on our back end. Um, the S, we run a native S3 service, so there's no translation required. Uh, and we have granular bucket management uh, supporting advanced verbs within the S3 API for ACLs, uh, lifecycle policies, cross-region replication. Uh, and we can achieve cloud-like costs with, without expensive recharges, um, meaning when you're, when you're in the cloud and your application is always reading data in and out, uh, the cloud's going to charge you for the egress and number of HTTP transactions. Uh, once, once you use some cloudy in behind your firewall, um, you know it's it's not charged for for the access. Um, so if you need to you know retranscode data or uh, re-retrieve data, restore data, um, those are all built in. Uh, it's all it's not additional charge. Uh, we're also a multi-tenant platform supporting quality of service billing. Uh, and additionally, we have a role-based access control and internal IAM service, so we can duplicate also the IAM, AWS IAM API inside, uh, integrated with the HyperStore system. Uh, and we can tier data into the cloud as well through, um, through multiple means, uh, mainly uh, auto-tiering uh, based on the age of data or infrequent access of the data. Uh, and we can create instant copies in the cloud too in the case where, where you need to burst into the cloud for leveraging cloud compute resources. Uh, and also uh, built-in data protection, multiple data protection options that I'll, I'll get into in a little bit uh, with standard self-healing self um, uh, options for you know scrubbing the data, making sure that all the data and bits are intact on the back end. There's um, integrity checks going on. Uh, as well as geo distribution that I will get into uh, further on. So why Evolfin? Um, one of the challenge of media management historically has been it's been the realm of administrator power users because videos are large and uh, often requires a lot of technical expertise to manage them, archive them. The thing that Evolfin does unique is to give a simplified beautiful user experience on the most complex aspect of workflows. It's like an Evolfin Photos app, but designed for the complex world of media orchestration and archiving. So when people look at Evolfin first, they are astounded by the user experience, whether you are using our web clients, which are designed to allow you to browse any kind of media, whether it's sitting in an archive or sitting in the cloud, you have a simplified uh, mobile experience, that allows you to get to any kind of media irrespective of the location. If you want to collaborate with other users, there are built-in collection features through the web and mobile apps that allow you to uh, easily send assets to anywhere in the world. And then for folks who are focused on production, editors and producers and archivists, there are desktop apps. And as part of the desktop experience, we also have plugins into all the Adobe CC apps and even going beyond Adobe CC apps to 3D apps like Cinema 4D and even UI UX apps like SketchUp. Within the Adobe world, our plugin support is unparalleled. Whether you are a layout designer working in InDesign, creating catalogs, 
or you are a graphics artist creating artwork in Illustrator or Photoshop, or of course, if you are a motion graphics person working in AE or a video editor working in Adobe Premiere or Media Composer, you are covered using our desktop and uh, creative apps. Now, in terms of the overall architecture for uh, Evolfin, um, basically, we are very flexible with regards to the components and where they are deployed. So for instance, our ingest service can be deployed on the cloud, on-prem, same thing with our MAM server. Editors and users can be anywhere in the world and they interact with the node that is closest to them. So you could have one or multiple ingest servers at various locations and ingest high-res media. In this flow, you are looking at 100 GB uh, clip being ingested through uh, ingest server, and we would then automate the workflows in the back end after ingest is done. Key strength of Evolfin is automation. So as you can see in this diagram, we would like to take a high-res file, generate proxies, generate mezzanine files out of it using transcoders on-prem or on the cloud. We also want to send a copy of the media for archiving for security and backup to a Cloudian archive store. We want to make a copy of the high-res media optionally to uh, on-prem SAN, and also trigger various AI engines for data analysis. So with Evolfin, you as the user doesn't have to spend a lot of time orchestrating and putting together these complete, uh, uh, these complex workflows. These are all automated out of the box. Right, so what is, what is object storage? Uh, or it's also called object-based storage. Uh, it's all accessed, accessing data or files. Uh, the objects are really just files uh, over an HTTP RESTful protocol, uh, just like a web URL. Uh, all thought content or files uh, essentially become a, a hosted web URL internal to our distributed object store cluster. Uh, and this is where Evolfin uh, would be configured to connect to your particular um, S3 endpoint that is typically uh, behind a load balancer uh, to distribute and load balance the traffic to the underlying systems. Uh, within our systems, we do not run um, you know, si different server roles. Uh, every server within our system runs the S3 service, uh, so it is scalable, uh, horizontally scalable. Um, and within, you know, object storage, instead of storing files in a file system or under directories where the file system is maintaining the inodes, um, it's a flat namespace over this RESTful HTTP uh, protocol. Uh, there's no file system, uh, and so each uh, bu data is written into what's called a bucket or a container, uh, and each bucket or container is unique to, um, to its within that cluster. Um, there can't be duplicate names, um, but being a multi-tenant platform, there can be different different users that have the same name. Um, but but the buckets must be unique within the region within that uh, within that system. So why should we why consider object storage? Um, you know, it increases the storage scalability. Uh, it increases it reduces the cost of storing and reduces the cost of accessing the data, uh, as well as reducing the management. Uh, requirements to, to manage the storage infrastructure. Um, there's many different mechanisms in, built into the S3 API uh, in, that define how you can access the data, uh, whether you do a, a byte range read request or multi-part upload. Um, there's different, many different um, options or operations that are part of the S3 API. Uh, in addition, there's metadata that is associated to a file. Typically on a traditional file system, the metadata is stored within the file system. You know, who owns the file, who created it. Uh, within object storage, that it can be abstracted and manipulated without actually performing any I.O. operations against the data. Uh, so it's simply adding tags. Uh, metadata tags can be uh, added without needing to modify the data. Uh, in addition, there's greater data protection capabilities. Uh, we support replicas and erasure coding. I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, and we're a single namespace, regardless of the geography, and maximizing the uh, data, data availability. Um, so as a user or developer, you can you know, securely manage and access the bucket and the data anytime and anywhere in the world. 
um, as long as you have that web access to that internal uh, network. And as a storage administrator, you can easily manage and provision storage to uh, any group and any user on an always-on, uh, highly scalable uh, cloud storage. So what does it take to be the most compatible S3 object store? Uh, so on the left side, we, we have uh, our compatibility view covering you know, the S3 aspects uh, that there's overlap, uh, and then also the multi-tenant aspect. So there's an admin API for automating uh, provisioning of users and tenants, uh, running reports, uh, defining QoS policies, monitoring. Um, it's all prepackaged and supported. Um, and so anything that it takes to administer our system, we, we built into our admin API. Um, and that is secure and can be also connected into uh, like internal Active Directory systems. And on the right side, the S3 API, um, you know, the red uh, is are really the basic operations that are common across all object stores, you know, get bucket, get object, put object, basic read and write operations. And then we have in the orange more moderately complex operations for website, URLs, or uh, ACL support, uh, multi-part upload, uh, posting objects versus just putting. Uh, and then at the bottom, the green, are the more advanced complicated uh, operations that are that are more difficult to provide. Uh, request payment, uh, get bucket cores, put bucket cores, uh, lifecycle policies, uh, tagging, um, versioning, and things like notifications. There's a lot of different things that are available in the S3 API that um, that we also implement. And more, mostly, you know, the S3 service. Uh, it's not just about the the ins and outs of getting the data. Um, it's important to match the spec of the AWS SDK for error responses, the proper RESTful error format, the proper request and response headers, so that you've often, you know, they're, they're going to interpret the appropriate response or, or expect a response similar to what AWS does. So we pride ourselves in, in adhering to that spec very closely. Uh, in addition, supporting the uh, signature version 4 authentication requests. We've had this in our product for uh, since day one, um, as well as you know, supporting the operations on the service, buckets and objects, and ACLs. Thank you. Uh, Multi-location capabilities, that is a key part of Evolvin's offering. Now, location might seem like a simple concept, but in Evolvin system, it's formalized. So it is aware of locations which can be virtual. In this visual that you see, we have physical locations, Miami, San Ramon, Boston, Cloud. So you could have the solution distributed across multiple locations physically or within a large office. You could split location based on buildings, departments, or when you are working from home because of COVID-19, your location could be your home office. By being aware of the location, Evolfin can do some fantastic automation. So for example, when you are ingesting content, it's aware that what's your location and it'll copy the high-risk media that you're ingesting to your storage, whether it's, whether it's a portable drive or a SAN or NAS. When you are looking at making, uh, sending a copy to archives like Cloudian S3, uh, it knows what your location is. The location aware hub can send it to the right, right Cloudian device. So if I'm in San Ramon, it will have the copy end up in the Cloudian uh, store in, in San Ramon and in Miami, the Miami specific store. If I am in the cloud, it can send it into S3. And that then allows you to do smart restores. So if let's say I'm in Boston and I'm looking for some files which are sitting in the archive in San Ramon and I request the files, it can go and query the database and it's aware the location is San Ramon and it'll then do a transfer from San Ramon to Boston. And that transfer might happen over our accelerated S3 transfers or it might use a file acceleration system like Aspera. This would be automated from a user's perspective. If a user in Miami is requesting content, let's say that is in all three locations, San Ramon, Boston, Cloud, some files are in Cloud, some files are in Boston, they don't have to think about where to pull the file. They just request 
and the system will use the location awareness to bring down the content to the right uh, uh, um, storage at that location. Now, why bother with a, a DAM, MAM, PAM solution that covers all the three uh, pillars? The number one reason for our customer is security. You could go and put things into an archive or directly into storage, but then there is no security. Anybody could come in and move content, delete content, and can play havoc with the um, archive or the file system, especially when you are talking about large volume of uh, files. So this is where the gatekeeper approach of Evolfin comes in, which manages the assets uh, uh, securely. Now, once you have your assets secured, you need to have strong configuration management. If something changes, if somebody retouches an image or renames a file, you need version control capabilities that go beyond just keeping multiple copies of assets, whereby they can actually track the changes. And one of the most unique feature Evolfin has, which I'll discuss later, is the deduplication technology we have built. Uh, collaboration is a key aspect of uh, working with uh, assets, being able to deliver assets to various uh, endpoints, being able to bring people together without duplicating content in multiple services. That's managed using our collaboration engine. Being able to know where you are in the workflow. Is uh, editor done making the changes that you asked for? Is this content published or do you need to do a takedown and this content is uh, expired? All of that is made possible using the extensive search capabilities that Evolfin has. And these search searches go beyond just searching via metadata. You can set up automation based on search where you could schedule something and it can go and trigger a workflow based on, on the uh, search results. Being able to tier assets, uh, that's key for keeping the cost down. So you might start with assets in a SAN, then you want to put them into a Cloudian store, and then you might want to make them go into a deep glacier for reducing the cost. So all of that can be managed using uh, our, our solution. Uh, I have mentioned automation a few times. We leverage automation in variety of workflows, ingest being the first one where you can set up ingest rules on how to treat a particular piece of media. Does it need to be transcoded with uh, this bit rate or that bit rate? You can automate those workflows. Producers can um, automate uh, archiving using our ARS service. That's an automatic retention service where you can specify complex rule that once my project is done, collect all the elements. So it's one thing to go and dump 2,000 files into an archive versus having an automation which is smart enough to realize that this project is linking with 2,000 clips and it can automatically collect them and archive them and tier them through the uh, various tiers uh, that are there. And then same thing when you are bringing projects back online, you don't want to go and find 20 files and trigger restore. With our system, a producer could say, hey, I want to reuse this uh, project and we are responsible for figuring out all the objects that are use being used in that project and bringing them alive. Once the projects are alive and you are working on it, distributing it to various endpoints. These could be video on demand services, these could be content management services, or a simple website. Evolfin can automate all these workflows. It can even allow you to set up Zapier uh, 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 triggers where when content or metadata changes in Zoom, a Zapier integration fires off and that can allow you to have thousands of apps that Zapier integrates with from CRM apps to uh, uh, workflow apps are all part of that. High availability is also key. When you have a complex orchestration deployed, you want to make sure it'll be up 24 by seven and Evolfin has some unique technology for allowing failover to happen if a <clears throat> service uh, goes down. And all this is offered in a simple uh, to use interface, whether you are restoring or archiving asset, it's a single button operation behind which there might be 20 steps happening, but from a user experience perspective, it's all uh, very, very simple. So Raul mentioned a couple of slides back about location aware capabilities, uh, and that's important because Cloudian is, is also location aware. We support single and multi-site topologies. And we define how the data is stored and protected through storage policies. Um, and those storage policies also have tunable consistency levels. So we can offer a single site deployment uh, with local erasure coding or local replication. And in multi-site -configura multi configurations, we can do uh, 
replication, um, choosing how many copies to keep in each of the sites, uh, and then also replication over erasure coding, where essentially a, each site is erasure coded locally, and then it's a full mirror to one or more to another or more than one more site. Um, and then we can also do multi data center with uh, non replicated erasure coding, otherwise called distributed erasure coding. And that starts when we have three or more data centers available with a low latency network between them. Um, those should all be within close geographical um, low latency capabilities. Um, so we, when you create a bucket, when a user application creates the bucket, they define uh, either they use the default storage policy or, or they specify uh, a specific storage policy. So as Roel mentioned, if, if you have certain work, workflow that is in a particular site and you don't need that to replicate to another site, uh, you can granularly choose which which storage policy to achieve that with. Uh, and tunable consistency levels allows you to, to uh, function as either you know, synchronous or asynchronous based protection mechanisms. And we can combine multiple tiers of these consistency levels live within the same policy all at the same time. Uh, so that allows for greater protection. So you try to you know, operate in a more synchronous method uh, versus uh, async, but in case there's a, a potential, potential failure, network glitch somewhere, um, our system will step down through the consistency levels that are enabled to uh, satisfy that read or write uh, request transaction. I want to talk a little bit about uh, data search. Uh, mentioned object metadata earlier. So the object metadata is, um, you know, it's, it's Basically, it's not associated with the the actual file or object data on disk. Uh, underneath the covers, we use a NoSQL database that's uh, massively parallel and, and distributed and scalable. And we can uh, enable metadata synchronization into a cluster of Elasticsearch or into other, you know, into Zoom. Uh, and then that enables additional data visualization. Uh, mechanisms to build out dashboards and things uh, to have visibility into the object store uh, metadata without needing to necessarily, you know, interface with the actual underlying storage. So using Evolfin um, search using metadata and even restore using metadata as possible, you could go and locate a piece of content or multiple file and then just right click uh, restore and it has metadata about the location and can uh, then bring down the content to wherever you are requesting it from. Now, uh, besides managing your high-res media in Evolfin, we also allow you to manage any type of content, and especially content that is uh, used by editors like Premiere project files or After Effects pro project files or design files, images. And one of the unique things we do with those kind of media is our front-end deduplication technology. This is truly unique. Nobody else out there does this. So the idea is that in a traditional DAM or MAM, if you were to export a file, uh, let's say a video, that you need to uh, get it out, and if you were to export it, let's say as a ProRes 422 LT, it might be 10 gigabyte for 20 minutes. And if your producer says change this or that, like add a title card, you might have to export again, and it's also 10 gigabyte. So the problem with that approach is two versions, 20 gigabyte, it could take you hours to upload that into your uh, MAM or DAM, and especially these days when you're working from home, it can take even longer. But with Evolfin, when you check in that next revision, we can automatically detect on the desktop what changed and just transmit the changes over to the MAM. So instead of uploading 10 gigabyte or 50 gigabyte, we might just upload a one megabyte change for that next revision you created for that video or image, and that could be uploaded in seconds versus hour. So it has the potential of completely changing your user experience when you're working with large files from anywhere in the, in the world. Now, um, a common deployment for Evolfin is to have a hybrid uh, setup where the Evolfin DAM or MAM server is in the cloud 
and there are brand portals using our preview server also running in the cloud with combination of transcoders and archive uh, destinations in both locations. And so you could set up our hubs, the transcode hubs, the cloud ingest hub anywhere in the on-prem office location. You could have your storages and archives like uh, Cloudian on-prem, but also have the flexibility of pushing relevant media into the cloud. So for example, you might want to co make an extra copy of the content into Amazon S3 for the high-res media or export so that you can distribute it to anyone in the world, and that's possible using our Cloud Archive Hub. If you are a remote office user, you have some accelerated transfer paths that you have available as part of our built-in accelerator that can allow you to transfer media rapidly from anywhere. So this is an example of our accelerated transfer agent. So if you're working from home or anywhere in the world and you have a bunch of clips, we will automatically uh, paralyze these transfers, chunk them over the wide area network, and the most uh, important thing is make them receivable. So what happens if you're working from home late night, you start a transfer and you go to sleep, your laptop naps, what happens to that transfer? We would be able to resume that and ensure that the media makes it into the cloud. And once it's in the cloud, then all the remote workflows, transcoding, AI analysis can, can uh, be done on that uh, piece of media. This is an example of our dashboard, which is tracking all the uploads or transfers that you might be making from the desktop. And our goal has always been to make all these complex operations within the reach of an ordinary user who doesn't have the time or mental bandwidth to debug complex uh, transfers and archiving uh, workflows. And in some cases, customers want to be 100% in the cloud. So you might uh, be at a point where a remote VPN connection is not working for you and not a problem. We can even support workflows where you can locate your edit station, whether it's a premier edit station or a graphics edit station directly in the cloud. So there's absolutely no on-prem infrastructure. Everything, the archive is in, in the cloud for 100% deployment with uh, this large amount of data being managed in Evolvin. And one of the ways we do that is we have a built-in S3 uh, agent that runs on any desktop, Windows, uh, particularly on the cloud, Mac also supported, which allows you to move content from any S3 bucket at a rapid uh, pace without needing any third-party uh, tools. This is also an example of our uh, global reach. So a lot of use cases require people to bring in content from field. So you might be in Sao Paulo or you might be in uh, um, Singapore and you want to upload hundreds of gigabytes or even terabytes of media into your MAM. We offer uh, web endpoints that allow you to set up a S3 URL or bucket in that specific location where you are. So you would just upload your high-res media into that uh, nearest location to, to you. And once it makes it into the Singapore location, for example, here, we would use the uh, backend uh, acceleration that Amazon offers to move content from Singapore to, let's say, New York over a backend network that operates at 10 to 25 gigabits per second, and then make the media accessible either on-prem in New York, make a copy into Cloudian uh, uh, object store, uh, but from a user perspective, this offers a very cost-effective way of transferring large media without needing uh, external tools like Aspera, et cetera, to do the, the same workflow. So in Cloudian, uh, security is a prime focus. Um, we support uh, role-based access control. So there's, there's uh, system administrator, storage administrator, uh, multiple levels of uh, access there. Uh, and then the individual tenants or groups, um, there can group admins or uh, just individual users. Uh, and then also IAM service, which allows um, users to only have S3 access and not uh, access to our, to our, we have a management uh, console. Um, but the, the um, individual IAM users would have S3 credentials only, and so the group admin or the it's, it's synonymous with the AWS root account, uh, and that provides additional uh, security mechanisms to uh, integrate with IAM bucket policies. Back to, you know, kind of tying back into the advanced um, verbiage within the S3 API. 
there's also, you know, access control, control groups, um, user and group ACLs, bucket policies. Uh, complex security pro uh, policies can be defined for buckets and individual objects. Uh, we also have uh, write once, read many, aka worm protection uh, that is capable. I'll, I'll cover that in the next slide a little bit further. Uh, then we have open APIs to access those data and records uh, and download as needed, also matching the AWS S3 uh, API specs. Um, there's TLS or SSL support. Um, most of our, all of our internal services are, are SSL and secure for, for authentication mechanisms. Uh, and we can, we use the certificate based, um, you know, policies there. Uh, certificates, you know, whether they're self-signed or, or we support CA signed as well. Uh, capabilities for audit logging. So we, we log every transaction within the system as well as support bucket level logging um, where the uh, request to an individual bucket would all be logged to a logging bucket for further, um, you know, analysis or security review later on. Um, we also spend a lot of focus on uh, secure uh, FIP certification, CC certification, um, and supporting AES 256-bit uh, encryption, um, allowing users to encrypt the data through the, through the entire transaction of uploading over an SSL connection and then being encrypted either what's called server-side encryption or client-side encryption. Um, where the data is either encrypted on the server side or it's pre-encrypted on the client side. Um, and that determines how the keys are managed. Uh, server side, we will do the management of the key uh, and sidecar that with, uh, with the metadata in our NoSQL DB. Uh, and client side, you know, the, the client would need to keep their private key uh, because they encrypted it before uploading. Um, we support that option as well as uh, integration with key management systems uh, for um, is using a third party like AWS KMS to, um, to manage uh, the keys for individual objects and buckets. Uh, and there's optionally uh, versioning support, uh, which I'll cover in the next slide. And uh, finally, there's data validation uh, that, that I mentioned before. We're doing checksums on read uh, to make sure that, um, you know, the, the read request matches, the, the bytes we're returning, you know, matches across multiple nodes before actually acknowledging that request. Uh, and then again, you know, we're software defined, so, you know, there's not a whole lot to our server. Um, I'll cover the specs towards the end of this later, uh, but we just need an x86, you know, decent CPU, a high number of disks, uh, and, um, you know, fast network connectivity to, to scale this out. So on versioning, um, this is not to be, um, this is not in lieu, this is, this is separate from Evolve and versioning. This is just at the object store level. I uh, just want to make that, that distinction. Uh, but the versioning is enabled at a bucket level. When it's enabled uh, at a bucket level, the key or the file object name, uh, anytime it's written into that bucket, it'll have a unique version ID um, associated to it. Um, and that could prevent from accidental deletion. Somebody accidentally says, oh, I need to purge the, this project or asset, um, and then decides, whoops, that was a mistake, you can go back and reference the previous version of that. Um, also preventing malicious attacks or, you know, general rogue admins. Um, worm access, write once, read many, uh, are worm objects. Um, this is defining that once an object is written, it cannot be updated uh, or deleted or overwritten uh, until a certain retention period has been reached, and that is defined, can be defined at both the bucket level as well as object level. Um, and this can operate in two different modes, a governance mode and a compliance mode. Um, the compliance mode is fully, it's just that, it's fully compliant and there's no way around that, and that's the um, most common way to deploy this um, with worm enabled so that um, so that there's no admin that can go in and bypass it um, and in governance mode there is an exception to where um, through through advanced mechanisms we can we can work with support with uh, with the customer to uh, enable string up that space 
Um, but the compliance mode is, is fully certified and, and um, validated through uh, Cohasset Associates, um, and it is uh, solid. So by now, I hope I've convinced you that we are the best MAM on the planet, but uh, how do you get data into this uh, great uh, MAM that we have? So there are a couple of ways to do that. The easiest one is to bring an S3 bucket to the, the, the table. So you could bring uh, S3 bucket uh, to a Cloudian um, object store. You might already have petabytes of data sitting in uh, object store that is S3 uh, API driven, or you might have Amazon S3 buckets with uh, uh, data in it. All you have to do is use a simple web form where you specify some details about your S3 bucket and hit enter, and Evolson will take care of all the workflows uh, behind the screen. And these are fairly complex workflows, like you might have terabytes of content as you're ingesting. There might be duplicates, there might be corrupt files, illegal file characters. You might want to get certain uh, file paths uh, bypassed from transcoding, or you might want to send some objects to our AI hub to do AI analysis. So all of that would be automated as part of our accelerated S3 transfer. So I use the word acceleration to uh, go back to my point where um, I talked about the buckets could be anywhere in the world. So in this example, somebody is uploading high-res media from Singapore and they want to make sure it's all accelerated through the high-speed 10 to 25 gigabits per second backbone all the way to, let's say, New York. So that would be done using our accelerated transfer. Now, there might be other times when it's uh, difficult to have a, a fast internet pipe that can handle terabytes or petabytes of content, but you might still want to archive and bring it into the cloud. So we offer a secure data box service where we will ship you a secure data box with AES-256 encryption, tamper-proof, and um, this box can be overnighted to you. You just dump all your data from various drives and archive backends into this uh, secure box and FedEx it back to our cloud provider uh, overnight. And then once it is there, the process is automated. That data box automatically gets plugged in into our uh, networks and we start to then run a bulk uh, ingest uh, uh, automation to start moving the content out, transcoding it, doing AI analysis. And this could be completed in a matter of uh, 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 days. And then all you have to do is plug in your home computer into the cloud uh, connection and you're ready to, to go. And this is something that has uh, really helped a lot of companies where they have struggled with, how do we get all this data in, into the cloud? And now there's a secure way of doing that. Thank you. Uh, so these are the uh, deployment options that Cloudian offers. Um, there are a couple other uh, different appliance specs, but uh, an entry level is a, is a 1U server that has uh, 12 high capacity drives of various sizes. Um, the entry capacity is about 96 terabytes. Um, and we also have our 4000 uh, unit and a, uh, another one that's called a 4516 unit. Uh, and those have either 70 or 96 high capacity drives in a four rack unit system. Uh, and then there's a pair of SSDs in those uh, and they come with 10 gig networking. Um, and then we can also be deployed with software only. So if you have standard commodity servers that um, you'd like to reuse, then, then those can be, um, you can run software only uh, as well. So thank you. Uh, I want to pass it over back over to Audrey. If you need more information, you can find us at evolfin.com and cloudian.com. And back to you, Audrey. Thanks for that. Uh, I'd like to thank Raul and Rich for their time today and our audience for joining us as well. We do have some time for a couple questions. Um, so if you have any, please be sure to enter them into the tab at the bottom of the screen if you haven't done so. I also wanted to point out again that we have included some content in the attachments tab at the bottom of your screen, so be sure to check those out as well. Um, with that, I'll move to our first question. First question is, can Zoom and Cloudian be deployed as an HADR configuration? Yeah, this is Rahul. Um, Evolve and Zoom supports a, a non-stop uh, mode, which is our high availability disaster recovery mode. You can set up replicas around the world or in the same building for automated uh, failovers and disaster recovery. 
And similarly, Cloudian is a, uh, you know, it, it's a distributed system that can also be, uh, config that is configured in a high availability capable of DR uh, configurations if spanning multiple sites. Uh, all of the content is, is protected as, as uh, outlined earlier so that it tolerates, you know, either a you know, node level outage, multiple nodes outage, uh, or even a site outage depending on the, the different implementation topologies. Thanks, guys. I'll move into our next question. What's the difference between version control on Cloudian and version control on Evolve and Zoom? So on the, the, on the Cloudian, oh, you want to go ahead? <laughs> oh, no, no, go ahead. Sorry, sorry for that. Okay, sure. So the, the version control on, on Cloudian um, is going to uh, create a, each, each version of an object is going to be a full duplicate of that object. Uh, whereas the Volfin uh, side, as, as Roll went through, it, it could, the version control could only cover the delta between, uh, between those objects. Yeah, that's right. So when we create a version in Evolfin, we avoid making a full copy. We just store the changes as uh, forward deltas so that you can reconstruct them at a later point. Yeah, and on the Cloudian end, so it's a full copy so that, you know, in case of accidental deletion or ransomware, there's a full copy available from previous versions. Great. Thanks, guys. Moving into our next question. What performance changes do you see if a Volson Zoom is running in the cloud and the Cloudian storage devices are running on-premise? So as far as Volson is concerned, it's orchestrating um, components anywhere. So even if it's running in the cloud, it'll be orchestrating an archive hub that would be on-prem. So if we need to order that archive hub to restore content um, and make a copy into Cloudian, object store or the other way around, it's really talking to the local servers that's running and it's operating at a LAN speed. So it doesn't really add any uh, delays, but you get the benefit of uh, a cloud deployment. Okay, I'll move in. I think we have one last question here. What happens to my video edits if I lose my internet connection while editing? How does Evolve and Zoom handle this? So if you, um, basically lose internet connection while editing, one of the key differentiators for us is you can always have an edit proxy checked out into your local drive. So you do not need a connection to stream the proxy or the asset. So you could be sitting in, in your basement and editing files, and then only at the point where you are ready to publish a milestone like check in a premiere project or uh, publish a, a video, you required a, internet uh, uh, connection. Great. I think that concludes our questions for today. If anyone does have any open questions, please be sure to reach out to us at um, info at cloudian.com and info at evolving.com. We can answer any additional questions. Um, you can go to our websites as well for more information. Thank you again for joining us.